Hello web developers, welcome to a project walkthrough for the Watts 3020 text adventure project. This is a project where we're going to create a little choose your own adventure style uh, story for the web browser and it is going to focus primarily on defining functions that handle different parts of the whole gameplay mechanism and putting those together in order to create a functional choose your own adventure. So let's get to it. Um, First thing that we're going to do is fork the repository into our personal account. Now that we've done that, we can clone that to our local development area. And I'm going to open that up in Sublime, which is my preferred text editor, but you can use whatever text editor you wish. And let's take a look at this uh, repository in order to get an idea of what's there. So we have a little CSS in here that is meant to make this presentable. Uh, we have a little background image that's supposed to give it a little more of a book-like look to it. And then um, we have our index.html, which uh, defines the space where the title is going to go, the space where the story is going to go, and the place where the uh, choices are going. And then um, we have a little main.js file, which is where really the meat of this project goes. So we're going to spend the bulk of our time here in this JavaScript file and fill in the functionality that we have uh, so far. So if we look here, we have a few variables defined at the beginning. Player name is an empty string. Choice list is an empty array. And current page is a null object. So, um, so right now, uh, we have those initial values available to work with. And then we have a bunch of to do's here. We're going to prompt the user for their name. We're going to create a function called get current page. We're going to create a function called record choice. Now we're going to create a function called undo choice. Um, that's nice. And then we're going to um, create a function called change page uh, that will actually handle the turning the page part. Um, so that's great. Uh, if we continue down, we see that we have story data, which is the information that's used for the content of the story. So the story data is an object, and that object has a title property, and then it has sets of these page properties. So the page properties are named with the a slug that represents each page. Now a slug is a term that we use in web content a lot to indicate just a label for a piece of content. It's typically unique and it's typically safe to put in a URL. Um, these slugs meet that, that description as well. And you can see that each page object is an object in and of itself that has the properties text and choices. And um, text is a template literal which uh, is the text of, the, of that page of the story. And choices is an array that contains choice objects. The choice objects have two properties in each of them, the text and then the link, which is the slug of the page that that, that text is supposed to link to. So by coordinating the information, the slug of each page with the slug that's referenced in the link, we can move players through to different parts of the story. And you can see that some choices arrays only have one link in them. Um, it could be possible to have more than two links in a choice array as well, depending on how complex you wanted to make your story. So um, now that we've taken a look at this story data object, which is really critical to get familiar with, so you'll have time to, to sort of soak it in later as well, um, let's take a look at the main script of this program that executes. So this is what we're given um, to, to sort of get things going. Now we have a bunch of stuff being done with the DOM here to set up the different parts uh, that are going to be modified. So title takes in the, the title from story data. We grab out page content and our choices list in order to use uh, later on. So um, so that's nice. We, uh, we have a, an update page function here that handles all of the page updates uh, from the DOM perspective. And then at the end of it, after it's done all of the page end updates, it calls the add event listeners function. The add event listeners function is defined right below it. And what that does is grab out all of the choices from the HTML where we just put them in. And then for each one, it adds an event listener that will listen for somebody to click on that choice. And if they do click on the choice, it's going to execute this change page function, which we're going to write later on. 
Then we also have a little undo button, which uh, we grab out and we add an event listener to the undo button as well. And that undo event listener is going to execute the undo choice function. Then it's going to execute the um, get current page function. And then it's going to uh, execute the update page function in order to um, make all of that come together. So um, that is the way that this application will work. And in order to make it work, we have to fill in these functions uh, as they're described. So, um, so let's start thinking through them. And we don't necessarily have to do them in the order that they're going to be executed by the application. And because we know exactly what each function needs to do and what it needs to return, it should be fairly easy to return to, to complete all of this work. So let's let's start out. First of all, we have the easy thing is to prompt for the va variable player name. So let's just say player name equals prompt. What is your name? That's great. That's all that we really need to do with that. We don't need to do anything else with it. Um, now we have to create a function called get current page. So that is going to be done with the function command. And then we're going to say get current page and add our parentheses to declare our function. And we know that we want it to accept a slug parameter. So we're going to just add a parameter called slug that we can reference inside of this function. And this function is going to fetch the current page and return a page object using the slug value for the key. So we should be able to say current page because we already have that value um, initialized as a variable. We have that variable initialized. So let's set the value of current page to some current page. So we need to get that current page, the, the, the page object out of the story data object, right? That's where all of our pages are stored. So we're going to reference story data and then we're going to use the, the key, the supplied key naming in order to access this. And our key is going to be stored in slug. So if slug equals P1, then it would pull P1. If slug equaled home end, it would pull home end. If slug equaled P4, it would pull P4. And that's all that we need to do. So then we can um, just return current page. And now this function takes the slug property, turns that into a page object, and then gives that back to whatever code called it. We don't really need to worry too much about what code called it as long as that code is written properly. Um, so we'll go ahead and save that. Then let's move on to the next function that we want to write. So this one's called record choice. And it's supposed to take in a slug parameter and add it to the choice list array. It says probably using push. Well, I don't know any other way to really add a value to an array <laughs> that is not a, sort of a pain. So let's go ahead and this is going to be called record, record choice. And it's going to take in that slug parameter again. And all that I need to do, it doesn't need to return anything. So all I have to do is say choice list dot push slug. And that's it. Now I've added that value to the the array. I can, if I want to, um, do a little console log so that I know because since this doesn't have any visible effect, I can say added. Um, oh, I'm going to use a template literal here. Added to choice list array. So there is a console log that will come out in the console that I can look at in order to see that I've that that, that is executing properly, and that's that's a handy thing to do um, sometimes. Um, don't be bashful about adding console logs into your code. Uh, it's it's fairly safe thing to do these days. Um, the next to do says create a function called undo choice that will remove the last slug in the choice list array and will return the last slug. That's the new last slug in the choice list array. So we want to remove. So we're going to undo a choice means we're going to take away the last choice that you made. And then the one that was right before it, that's the one that we want to return to. So OK, let's think through this. Undo choice. Um, we don't need any slug because we're only going to be working with the choice list array. So remember 
that if we want to remove the last item in an array, we say pop. So choice list dot pop will now remove the last item in the choice choice list array. Great. So now we want to return the last slug in the choice list array. So now that choice list array is one item shorter. We want to return choice list and we're going to use the square um, key notation again, but this time that key needs to be a number. And the number that we're going to use is going to be choice list dot length minus one. So that's the last item in the um, that is the last item in the array there. So we know that that's the last item in the array, and we can we can verify it by putting a console log, but we have to put our console log before the return because once the return executes, no other lines would be executed. So we'll say um, returning um, to previous page, right? Um, we could modify that message if we, if we wished. So uh, now we have to create a function called change page. It needs to accept a parameter called slug, and it needs to handle the turning the page, and it's got a few things that it needs to do. So okay, let's let's define this function. Change page is going to take in a slug, not a slig, <laughs> and um, it is going to uh, do three things. It's going to call record choice, um, record the latest choice. So. For that, we're just going to be able to say record choice, and it wants us to just send the slug there, so great. And we just wrote the record choice function up here, and we know that it, it takes the slug, so that's, that's fine. Then um, it should set the current page value by calling the get current page function. So um, we're going to say current page equals get current page slug, great. And then we're going to say update page with the current page object sent in there. So we're going to call update page to update it to the current page. And that is everything that change page is supposed to do. So let's save this. Let's go down and look at, at exactly how that's going to be used. So change page just gets called there and it gets the slug um, from the uh, from the choice link. So that's some fun stuff that we'll look at when we get into DOM stuff. So I think we should be fairly well good to go here. So let's go ahead and go back to our command line and let's um, run our Python server and then we can Click over here to localhost, colon 8000, and refresh. It says, what is your name? My name is Sean. Here we go. You are a crow named Sean. I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, my inspector so that I can um, see the console and uh, see any messages that get put in there. So you see a farm off to the west uh, and your home forest off to the east. Well. What happens if we just fly back home? You return home to your comfy roost. Great. Um, we can see that it properly added this to the history array. If I use undo last choice, it should take me back to page one. Oh, I have a bug. Oh, but I think I know where, I think I know where that might have happened. So let's take another look here. You notice that up here we update page, but we don't ever um, uh, return record the choice. So let's just go ahead and add that here in case we want to undo right away. And we always we know that we're always going to start out with P1. And so since this is the the few lines that initialize this whole thing, we know that that's a safe thing to do. So let's go ahead and refresh that. And I'll say Sean again, and we'll clear the console. So we have this. Let's fly back home to our nest again. 
the end. Let's undo the last choice. Oh, and now we get back no problem. So that was the only problem. So a lot of the time, initializing variables is something that's complicated and has extra hidden gotchas. Um, so keep that in mind. Don't be afraid to use this console and look at what's going wrong and then and then figure out what's going on. Um, so uh, let's fly over the farm to the west. We fly over the farm. We see a piece of cheese lying on the picnic table. Oh, that's good stuff. Um, should we go for the cheese or decide it's not worth it? We're going to go for the cheese. All right, you swoop down to pluck the cheese from the table. Just as you grab a hold of the cheese, the farmer's cat leaps on the table ahead of you. Oh, no, that's terrible. Um, let's veer off or fly directly at the cat. Um, I'm going to try veering off. Oh, no, I got stuck in a picnic basket. Oh, uh, that's terrible. Um, let me undo that last choice. And we'll fly directly at the cat. Okay, so um, as we can see, uh, the story's working basically as we planned for it to work. And uh, we're having a good little time. So we could write new stories and put them in here. You could use this for all kinds of different stories. Uh, you generally have yourself a generic choose your own adventure structure now that you could use. You can also add all kinds of enhancements here. You could do some work with, uh, you know, the uh, date object in JavaScript and, and record little timestamps to let people know how long they've been playing or reading. Or you could do um, interesting things like have screens where you have to make a quick choice. And if you don't make a quick choice, um, then you uh, then you you go to some kind of fail state or some kind of cho auto choices already made for you. Um, all of that could be done by changing uh, the data structure and by adding different functions into all these different different instructions into all these functions that we created here. So now we could um, we could uh, turn off our server and we could run our, our good old git commands git add git commit we're going to always push our master branch and then going to create a gh pages branch uh, git checkout dash b gh dash pages and then we'll do our git push dash u for update origin gh dash pages colon gh dash pages that's the remote name and the local name just buttoning up everything making sure that all of our references are explicit and that's going to connect up our gh pages on github which should then allow us to easily see that we have uh, pushed our code. We should be able to go into settings here, scroll down and see that our code has been deployed successfully. And if we go here, we can say Joe is our name. You're a crow named Joe. You are flying high above the countryside. So um, everything is working and everything is published. And that, my friends, is the extent of the text adventure project. I hope you had a good time working through this project with me. I encourage you to work through it on your own, enhance it, change it, make it yours, whether that's just stylistically, whether you write a new story or whether you add a whole bunch of functionality, live with this a little bit and get to know it. Um, it's valuable experience for putting together functions and for accessing data inside a complex object structure. So have fun, take care. I'll see you on the next project. Bye.